Hey, it's Bone Fist, Peterborough's first real superhero, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to melt HEP plastic into some high quality, resistant armor plating. Now, of course, you're going to need a toaster oven, oven, or panini press to melt the plastic down to get it into the shape that you want it. Uh, the plastic comes in many forms itself. Uh, bottle lids on most pop bottles will be HDPE, as well as detergent, shampoo, and yogurt bottles, stuff like that. You want to look for the HDPE letters on it, or possibly a triangle with a number two in it. It'll be like a recycling triangle with the number two. HDPE is number two plastic, high density polyethylene. Uh, once you melt it down, of course, it's going to become a stiff, resilient plate that you can uh, cut, form, or remelt down and use again for different things. Uh, you're going to need some pans depending on what you're using. If it's the panini press, you just need parchment paper. But you, if you're using an oven, you'll need uh, parchment paper and the pans. I have two here. You can get away with using one, but I find it's easier to use two because I'll set one on top and then they'll push down or you can push it down so it'll flatten it out as you're doing it. Some of the other stuff you might need are scissors to cut down your HDP, try and make it into small pieces and or flat strips. That way there isn't bubbles or anything in it when you're doing it and it works a lot faster to press it together and warm it up if it's in smaller pieces. Uh, you might need oven mitts, of course, for pulling it in and out, basic stuff. But that's pretty much all you'll need. The HDPE, get it in your pans and then we'll, we're going to melt it down and show you the process. We got our oven set to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius and we're going to take our two pans that we got here, one line the bottom with parchment paper, and then we got about 6.5 ounces of HDP here, cut up into strips or flat pieces. And we're just gonna start placing them along the bottom. I'm not gonna do the whole 6.5 ounces in one go. You wanna let it melt down a bit before you put in some more. Let's try and get even placement and some of the rounder bits, you want to try and keep them facing up to try and keep air bubbles from uh, being trapped in there. But we'll try and get some even placement. Just spread out all your pieces. Make sure there's no gaps coming through. You can give it a bit of a shake if you need to. And of course, make sure you're doing this in a well-ventilated area or outside. Even though you are keeping it around the proper temperatures to keep it from producing fumes or anything toxic, it's still a good idea to do it outside just in case or in a ventilated area. So we're going to pop open our oven and we're going to throw this inside, close her up, and uh, I'm going to set it for 25 minutes, but it's a good thing to come and check every 5 to 10 minutes just to see how it's going. And we'll come back once it's shrunken up a little bit and we can add some more. Okay, now that it's warmed up and started to significantly uh, decrease in size, you can add more HDPE. And just keep repeating this process until you've used as much as you want for your plate. Like I said, I have 6.5 ounces. Uh, that's usually about the amount that I need for a high quality plate. So we'll keep piling it in there, that's almost all of it. And then we're just going to repeat this process, let it sit there for 5 to 10 minutes. And let it uh, warm up and shrink, uh, shrink down. And then we'll use this other pan that we have that had the pieces in it to compress it down and make the plate. Now that we've got it all nice and warm and started to uh, melt down, we're going to take this other pan that I've put parchment paper on the bottom of and place that on top and you're going to start to compress it and now every time you take it out maybe leave it sit for a couple couple more rounds of five to ten minutes you're going to want to compress it down as much as possible to try and flatten it out and then we're going to place this whole thing back inside with the top pan on it so that it's going to start applying heat from the top as well as the bottom and kind of working as a press. So we're going to throw that back in and then same thing after five to ten minutes. Keep checking on it and we'll come back when it's starting to 
flatten out and look like an actual plate. Now that our plate looks pretty uniform, we're just going to put the pan back on top. And if you want, you can clamp it down or just keep compressing it, possibly put a heavy object on top just to keep it flattened out as it's cooling. And I'll show a close-up of the HDPE symbol. Don't know if it's going to focus. There you go. And uh, we'll come back with the finished product once it's cooled down. You want to let it cool for probably half an hour, maybe even more. It can stay pretty hot. At this point, you're pretty much finished your HDPE armor plate. You've got a pretty resilient piece of uh, plating that you can use for different uh, projects and armors. Of course, you could also trim it down, uh, add more pieces in the toaster oven or in the panini press or whatever you're using and get more of a smoother surface. You can sand it. You can possibly even paint it, spray paint it, uh, use it for a lot of different projects and all the trimmings that come off of it you can use and recycle as long as they don't have any paint or any contaminants on them. Other than that, make sure to check out my Instagram and other videos relating to homemade armors and such. Uh, check out my Facebook as well, and then uh, make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. You know, show your support for the RLSH community and myself, Bonefist. And uh, thanks for watching. Bonefist out.